Hello world, and welcome to a game called Perfect Date. Now, I got this from Steam, or it might have been Humble Bundle. If you don't know about that, it's a really good source. You get 12 games on their monthly deal for, it's like $6, and they donate a lot of it. So, chapter one, new game. And if you don't know, cats are the best creatures in exist- no. They're my favorite animal. Enter name. Uh, this looks like a Lucas. I'm an angel. What am I accepting? Auto save. Yeah, sure. That's pretty cute. Chapter one. Space. I mean the ocean. That's what I meant. I'm not sure how long I've been sailing, but it feels like forever. I'm not feeling too well now, so it's a huge relief to hear the decks. Deck lad shout. Island approach. Make yourself ready. I'm finally here. When I applied last month, I was just another broke student living off of baked beans, and I didn't really think I had a chance of being accepted to be part of the prestigious Cat Island research team. Yet here it is, the little black dot in the distance growing bigger by the second, is the infamous, infamous Cat Island, the place I will call home for the next few months. My heart momentarily skips a beat. What if there's been a mistake? What if they've accepted someone else's application and accidentally set the offer to me? I rummage in my bag until I find the papers. DPRI Corporation, dear Lucas, we are pleased to be able to offer you the position of research assistant to Professor Pa at our research facility at Cat Island. The position will be for an initial period of eight weeks. Your contract will be sent separately. We look forward to working with you. You are sincerely Professor Pa. PhD, BSC Hans DPG. No, no mistake. That's my name right there in the top left hand corner, Lucas. And there's his at the bottom, the genius behind the whole operation, Professor Pa, science genius and my new boss. I look up from my papers to see dry land rapidly approaching before us. It seems to be surrounded by a huge barrier of impenetrable black rocks. As we get closer, we're not slowing down, and I begin to worry that we're going to crash into them. Then at the very last moment, we take a sharp turn to the left, and suddenly we're sailing smoothly towards the jetty, towards the jetty through an opening in the rocks. I blow out the breath that I've been holding back into a smile. Nicely done, skipper. The ferryman comes out from behind the steering wheel, ignoring my attempts at camaraderie, and shouts rather brusquely. Take all your belongings, we won't be back for a few days, so don't leave anything you'll need. Thank you. I smile weakly at the ferryman and his son and pick up my bag, ready to disembark. We glide seamlessly up the wooden jetty, and the son leaps ashore to tie us off. He is greeted by a bulky man in a uniform, who I take to be a security officer of some kind. Joe. Sir, you caught a mouse. And then he laughs ha loudly, as though he's the funniest thing he's ever heard. It's very disconcerting. Wait, what? The security guard remains shortly and turns his attention to me. Let's be having you then. That's a security guard? He doesn't look like one. He holds out his large hand, which I assume is an offer to help me in the boat. But as I reach out to take it, he snatches it away, throwing me off balance so that I almost fall over the side. What a great start. ID card? Oh, I, I see, of course. I reach into my back pocket and hand over the laminated card I was given on the mainland. Cool. Cat Island security clearance. So when do we see the kitties? <laughs> Unless we're the cats and the humans are... It's like an alternate dimension. He barely looks at it before striding off, grunting over his shoulder. This way. I follow him down a dirt path and get my first proper view of the island. It's beautiful, lush and green, I'm always under its spell. 
After no more than a couple minutes, trekking, we're in base camp, which consists of an assortment of tents and huts. Among them are two solid-looking structures, one larger and one smaller. I presume these are the labs. The whole camp is moderate, but functional. It reminds me of an army outpost. I'm struck by the lack of people. In fact, there's no one ap around apart from older women sitting outside, peeling a pile of potatoes. I smile and give her a little nod, but she just stares back at me. <laughs> Miss Marigold. I try not to get paranoid. <laughs> is, is this a happy game? What did I get myself into? Here, he stopped at the largest of the tents, indicating that I should go inside. I feel rude just walking in, so I make my presence none first. Ahem, <clears throat> hello? A firm but friendly voice calls out. Come. Oh, jeez. I walk in and there he is, hunched over some documents. The great Professor Pa. I thought he would be a cat. Sir, it's an honor to meet you. Yes, yes, you must be Lucas. Come in, my dear. Glad to have you on board. Good journey. Well, long. Yes, indeed, we're rather tucked away here. Let me offer you some refreshment. Water, coffee, something stronger, perhaps. I love tea, but water's very good, but tea, as long as it's hot tea. I'd love a cup of tea if there's a pot on the go. Oh, I can tell you're new. The tea here tastes like cat's piddle. You really don't want to drink it. He pours me a cup of coffee from his canteen instead. It's a good thing I like coffee. It will take you a while to find your way around and discuss how it all works, so for, di for, so for today, I thought I would just get you kitted out, and maybe introduce you to some of the locals. The cats, that is. I believe you already met most of the human locals. Uh, I've only met the ferryman and the security guard who brought me here. Yes, yes, that's about it. And the lady outside? Ah, oh, Miss Marigold. Her and her husband are the caretakers. Wonderful couple, the Marigolds. You'll meet them before too long. We're a tidy little family here, Lucas, and I'm sure you'll fit in nicely. Thank you, sir. I hope so. Okay, so first things first. This is your basic kit. He begins going through a pile of things on his desk, explaining each of them in turn. This is your backpack. You can put everything in it. We will be going on plenty of field trips, so it will be very useful. As will your own water bottle. My own water bottle, some disinfectant hand spray. Ah, these are heavily duty reinforced gloves, which are essential when tagging cats out in the wild. Don't want any scratches from felines. We don't know, now do we? I, I suppose not. I shove each item into my new backpack as he gives them to me. Likewise, these goggles are to be brought along all field trips, this lot here. He indicates to a small pile of what looks like laundry. It's basic uniform, lab coats, masks, stethoscope, etc. Portable first aid kit, camp knife, with all tools attached. Finally, and without a doubt, most importantly, this. He holds up something that looks like a lot like a mobile phone. What is wrong with my voice? Except it clearly isn't one. This is your catalog. A catalog? Yes, the name comes from its earliest version. It was initially designed to record and store data on the couch, scan them, and log their details. But as you can see, we've gone a long way since then. Now you can use it to communicate with the rest of our team. I've added everyone's contact details for you. Listen to music, take photos, there's even a pin that comes with it to insert microchips into the back of the cat's necks so that we can keep track of them. It's a very valuable piece of equipment, Lucas, and I need you to protect it, above all else. Do you understand? Is this the Pokédex? Are you Professor Oak? Please tell me my mom's not on this island. He is looking at me. He is looking at me directly in the eye and clearly expects a response. Yes, sir. Of course. I will look after it. Good, you'll get to know all the functions as you go along, but for now I suggest we see, take a stroll out and see if we can't find many new friends to introduce you to, so that you can try it out. He hands me the gadget. I feel a bit nervous taking charge of it, but also really keen to have a go.
We head down to the beach, the professor explaining things as we go. The mixture of terrain on Cat Island is quite unique. Even in such a re relatively small area, you'll find forests, mountains, jungle, beaches, woodland, all of these different geological and ecological zones in one place. It really is most remarkable. It certainly is. Even the lack of wildlife is in itself quite remarkable. What do you mean, Professor? Well, put simply, there is a type of force field that surrounds the island, disallowing anything to enter. You mean literally anything? Absolutely, no birds, fish, or creatures of any kind can penetrate it. But I got through somehow. Forgive my lack of intelligence on this subject, but uh, we are here. There we go. The professor lets out a distor disconcertingly loud laugh. Ah, oh, I see what you mean. Well, there's of course one small brick in this invisible wall, and that is where we built the jetty. Well, let's not get too bogged down in all of this right now. What do you need to know is basically the island is shaped like a peanut. That's very important. Why do I feel like this jetty is going to get overwhelmed and we're going to get attacked? He has picked up a nearby stick and draws a simple map in the, sa in the sand. This is our end of the island. It's very well known to us now. We've been researching here for many years. The other end is not so familiar to us. We have encountered difficulties that have hindered our progress in the region. Uh... Hello? Doki Doki, um, I'm pretty sure that was something bad happening. What type of difficulties, Professor? Well, we're not sure as if we'd like to be. But what I can tell you is that the environment has an adverse effect upon humans, inducing nausea at the very least. And the worst? Fainting, migraines, possible nerve damage. Oh, that's, that's, that's tiny. Gosh, that is serious. As I say, it's best to keep away, but let's not go into all of that right now, my dear. You've had a long day, for now let's just say that we refer to the far end of the island as the danger zone, with good reason. Uh, I must ask you not to put yourself at risk by venturing beyond this mountain range here. He refers to the map once more, drawing a line just past the center and an X through the end section. There are wild aggressive cats out there, I wouldn't want you getting too close to them. Unlike our lovely fellows closer to home, I haven't seen a single cat yet, come on. He has led me to a spot where a few cats are lounging about. What do you say we try your catalog now, Lucas? Catalog. He stoops down and picks up one of the animals, a disgruntled looking cat who is sleeping under the shade of a palm tree. Oh, it's beautiful. The cat lets out a displeased meal, meow, but doesn't struggle. Its large body billowing with long orange fur just sort of hangs in the professor's arm in lazy resignation. Would you like to have a go at scanning this delightful chap? I find the on switch and somewhat timidly activate it. Okay, yeah, my gadget. I thought he was talking about the cat. The gadget immediately comes to artificial life emitting a boop 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 sound with a red pulsating light. I select the app labeled cat scan. And it looks and it loads instantly. There's no delay on this thing. The professor holds the cat towards me with its arms outstretched. I'm sure he said the scanning chip is implanted on the back of the neck somewhere, but it's difficult to find this one's neck amidst the thick cloud of fur. I blow to make a parting and press the catalog to its skin. It's a bit like scanning groceries in the supermarket where I used to work. That should do it. And he plops the marmalade Tom back into the shade. <laughs> he just throws it back. Sure enough, upon withdrawal, I found the cat has been successfully scanned. Meow. Floofy Butt. Named Floofy Butt. Age 10 years old. Red Tabby Cat. Persian. Eye color red. That's perfect. It's my Pokédex. Amazing. Clever, isn't it? A large part of your job here will be the tag and scan the cat, such as Mr. Fluffy Butt here, but it looks like you'll have no problems at all in that area. Excel excellent work, Lucas. Thank you, sir. I can't wait to get started. Well, why don't you get a bit more practice with the catalog and scan the rest of them while we're here? These five spend a lot of time together. They're like a little family, aren't you? Oh, yes, you are. Oh, yes, you are. The professor seems a little bit 
seems to be a genuine cat lover like me. I think we're going to get on great. I feel like he actually isn't a cat lover and he's using them for his diabolical experience. Experiments? Okay, here it goes. No help this time. The professor steps back. The first cat I approach is very friendly with beautiful calico markings. It comes towards me already purring. Meow. Trixie, female, three years, eight months, calico American short hair, eye color green. Next is an elegant, sleek, hairless cat sitting gracefully in the sun. She doesn't pay me much attention and allows me to scan her with minimal fuss. Oh my. <laughs> Meow. Snooty booty. Gender female, 11 years old. Sphinx. Blue eye color. Meow. The fourth cat I approach is a noisy one. Meow, 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 meow. Mick Murphy, male, six years of brown crossbreed. What does that mean? A crossbreed between what? Eye color green. And finally, the one I've deliberately put off until last. He's been sulking around the edges of this activity, eyeing me suspiciously as though he could pounce at any moment. I laugh at myself, already projecting personalities onto these animals. Meow. Hiss. Kibbles, male, three years, the white British long hair. This one seems to be a little bit evil. All done. I hope you enjoyed meeting some of the locals. The professor lets out a little laugh. I have a feeling you'll get to know them quite well in time. That's probably enough for your first day, don't you think? It's quite a lot to take in. I'm suddenly exhausted and grateful to be heading back to camp. It's quite late by the time I have unpacked and settled myself, but I want to write my journal entry before I sleep. I'm surprised at how chilly it is. I have pulled my sleeping bag right up to my chin, but I feel goosebumps bloom all over my arms. Shivering, I rub them up to warm myself. So you have laboratories, but you don't have a house? It makes me smile to think that this inherent reaction to the cold is what will be keeping my new feline friends warm tonight. My eyelids close, thinking of cats in the island and the professor. The world around me drifts away as I float up into a dream. Oh, it's happening again. I'm not sure how long I've been asleep, but I wake up with a violent jolt that leaves me sitting bolt upright. It's too dark to see anything, but I hear a rustling and then a strange electronic noise, one that in my sleepy confusion I can't place right away. This music is creepy, but it's good too. It's, it's it's like his world is turning it upside down. The catalog! Acting on instinct, I scramble to my feet and follow the noise out of the tent. And, and what I see next. We'll have to wait and see in the next episode. Thank you for watching, and we'll meet again in the next contingency.